Like I said, again, live on stage yesterday, and I've said this many times before, I will never talk politics with you. Uh, and it's, I barely give a shit, because at the end of the day, I still gotta wake up and pay my bills, yep. straight up. All right, welcome to the next episode of Over a Pint. This week we have David Greenspan from Mindshare and Kitsback yep. and is there, is there more to that? Why don't you introduce yourself to the... Yeah, no, I mean, uh, well, from Mindshare, I'd say from Kits originally. We started off with Kits 12 years ago, a keep in touch system, helping realtors essentially stay in touch with their database, uh, built into doing it for mortgage brokers, and some loan officers and insurance, automotive. Um, so we're very fortunate for really what we've been able to build with Kits. But yeah, Mindshare was then born as just a voice, um, you know, and really is what I would sort of coin as like my personal brand at this point, but really it's just, it's it's simplicity, it's a voice, you know? Yeah, yeah but that's Sounds good. kind of like where I'm from. So this week we're drinking Cruiser All Day Pale Ale. Picked it because he likes to cruise on his bike, so I thought it was fitting. So yeah, let's cool. do this. Pop it, love it. Looking forward to trying this. Yeah, I've never had it, so hopefully it's. Well, good. I like the can so far, so you know you've got me sold. That's why I got it. And the so glasses, though, you can't beat these glasses. Oh, they're perfect. Now, the funny part about them, most people don't notice it. I didn't notice it until episode eight when an agent pointed out he put pit stains. <laughs> <laughs> you can see them right there. That's funny, man. Yeah. And hey, you never cheers. noticed that before. Cheers, yeah. buddy. <laughs> Oh yeah, it's good. Ale, nice. I'll take that. A little hoppy. It's cool. I like it. Okay, so when I, I like do, sometimes when I do episodes, I'll like privately message people and say like, hey, I'm interviewing this guy or this girl, and what do you want me to ask? Yeah. The number one question that I got for you is, all right, I know David, I've heard of Mindshare, but what the fuck do you actually do? <laughs> <laughs> what do I do? Um, half the time I have no idea. Uh, run around like a chicken with my head cut off, but I, I you know, what do I do? Uh, I, I literally, I run a business. I try to help realtors on a daily basis in a very genuine, passionate way how to succeed with their business. Mm -hmm. That is literally what I wake up and I do every day. Yeah. Um, what's in the background of that? It's the fact that we, we do have the kit system, which again yeah. helps them stay in touch with their database. Um, but Mindshare itself really is that, that training component that, um, you know, people said to me, Dave, it's motivational. I'm like, I'm not trying to motivate you. I'm trying to poke you in the head, you know, or like, or like in the forehead, kick you in the ass a little bit. Yeah. Like it's, it's just literally a voice of uh, thought, a voice of reason. I mean, yeah. whether you agree with the thoughts or not is a different story, but it's that idea of like, all I'm trying to do is really just get people to, to as we were saying before, bring it from the subconscious, make it conscious and make people realize that they are not the only one struggling with that, or they are not the only one that's thinking that way, or they are not the only one trying something or not doing something or whatever it be. It's just, it's trying to bring that voice of somehow, again, I guess you call it reason and poking yeah. in the forehead, you know? But that's, that's what I'm doing. Now, how finite does that get? Writing lots of content, talking to lots of people, yeah. uh, you know, meeting with lots of people, doing lots of back-end work, spending hours upon hours trying to build a business, yeah. but it is incredibly rewarding and at some point, should lend to the fact that I don't have to do much down the road, except yeah. for maybe ride my bike, hang with my kids, and yeah. swim in the pool that I'll one day have in my backyard. Yeah. <laughs> That's the dream. <laughs> That's it, man. So I know, like, so the first time I ever came across Kids Back was actually a client of mine, and they actually, and whether they use, they they don't use their CRM. Yeah. But that's just because, like, she literally, I'll, she gets emailed leads. She prints them out, puts them in a binder. Yeah. She's old school. But there's also but a million CRMs out there. She uses your CRM because she loves the print newsletter nice. about it. So what is different? Because that's what she says. It gets different than anything we've done with yeah. other things. She's tested other ones. What's different about your newsletter that would get someone like her who literally uses a different CRM now yeah. but just does the newsletter? Uh, well... <sighs> There's a few, okay, there's, there's some major differences with the way we do it. Um, first off, years ago, before we started Kits as Kits, yeah. the parent company is called Wham. 
yeah. WAM, WAM. Uh, WAM was doing for the likes of CIBC, RBC, AIG, Hewlett Packard, Microsoft, like massive, massive campaigns. Yeah. And through a joint project that we had done with uh, HP and Microsoft, we had mastered this thing called variable data. Yeah. Now, variable data is a technology. It allows us to personalize a message. So we're taking variable variables, things yeah. that change. We're taking the data, the changing data, and we're publishing it. Yeah. Right. So now it's saying you've got, you know, a hundred people on a contact list. We can take different profiles about each person, and send a different message to each person. Yeah. Well, again, why? How do you do that? Again, the why is the personalization, the relevance, getting you to pay attention to what I'm saying yeah. to you. Whereas if you talk to me about motorcycles, beer, hockey, right, yeah. you're going to get my ears perked up. Whereas if you want to talk to me about tennis and, and red wine and whatever, yeah. I might converse with you, <laughs> but it's not going to be the same type of thing, right? And we each have that. So where our newsletter becomes different is, number one, it's fully customized to the agent. Uh, yeah. Everything is branded. It's not just we take your mugshot, stick it here, put our header and everything else. Your colors, your logos, your branding, it flows through the entire piece, right? So it's incredibly branded. It'll look at your business card, your sold signs, your website, you name it. The next thing is personalization. This is the big deal. Yeah. This is where I say to everybody, and I don't knock my competitors because <laughs> I, I get along very well with my, my competitors. Uh, great people, great products. Uh, they do a great job. Yeah. Where we're different is we are the smartphone in a flip phone world, mm -hmm. okay? The flip phone will make a call. Yeah. The smartphone will just do more. So a newsletter without variable, it'll work. It'll get across to somebody, it'll deliver a message, and people will see it, and it'll help build Mindshare. Mm -hmm. What variable data now does is because we can use a different set of variables for each contact, what kind of house do they live in? Yeah. You know, what kind of ownership style? What kind of relationship? What language do they speak? What holidays do they celebrate? So I know you celebrate, you know, Christmas, and 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 and, and we're friends, not just yeah. a potential client or past client, right? Um, you live in a freehold home. You know, you're an owner. I'm going to use those variables to target you in that messaging. Yeah. And so now I can say to you as a realtor, Andrew, you've got a hundred people or a thousand people, whatever it is, I can literally create a unique message to each person just that they listen to it a little bit more. That is really where the big differentiator is. Yeah. We personalize, nobody else does. And so I'll get people sometimes, they'll say, well, Dave, you know, my company puts the person's name. And I say, well, that's like a word merge. And again, it's it's a good thing, but it's a, it's yeah. a very basic level of what we're doing. We know the term big data. Yeah. Um, big data is a very tech thing that we talk about in the background, but yeah. we really use big data. We really do leverage that stuff. We really do go through and go, what do we know about each person? And we utilize. So you got the personalization. Yeah. Uh, the changing shapes and sizes. Every single month, the newsletter is not a monotonous sort of same look and feel. It is literally going to be a you know, uh, uh, fold differently, wider, taller, longer, it's gonna open different, it's gonna be die cut, so it's gonna be shaped. We put yellow sticky notes in sometimes that are personalized from you, direct to your contacts, so it looks really cool. So again, you're, you're now using a campaign feel, yeah. rather than just a newsletter. And the last thing is the stamp. I mean, not only do we have a cool envelope with the window and everything else, because we know that realtors love for people to see their faces, uh, but there's the stamp. We put a real stamp on that envelope. Why? Nine out of 10 open rate. Uh, you look at it, you know me, you yeah. think I actually lick the stamp on. It's just, again, subliminal, yeah. subconscious, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it also allows for return postage. So your return address will actually be on that piece. Yeah. If it doesn't get to me or I've moved, and you didn't know about that, yeah. that's not a good thing. <laughs> but if it doesn't get to me, yeah. it'll end up coming back to you, okay. and you can track that stuff. Yeah. So it's customized, personalized, it's campaign style, and there's a real stamp on that thing. So then, so that mean like they're using your CRM, they, have the, they enter in that information about them, and then that you put, you're pulling that out, or you guys use other sources of data to get that information that's personalized? Again? Yeah, no, good question there. Um, again, when we first started, the whole idea was we needed your database online. So the yeah. reality is, we're, we're yes, you can pull in from online lead sources and whatever else, but yeah. the reality is, you got to give me a database. You've got to give yeah. me a list that we can then pump into the system. And when we first started with it, it was a mailing list on steroids okay yeah. you could go in there you could add you could edit you could delete you could print out mailing labels you could export to excel uh we then later on built in an email feature that allowed you to email but it was january 2016 where we officially launched so we've been working on it for a while a full crm called loop crm yeah right and so now that is full CRM that's in there. Again, where's the data come from? It would come from the agent themselves, yeah. you know? And then if they want to connect like lead funnels and stuff yeah. like that, you can generate it in there too. Sounds good. And then you guys also have websites as well. Yeah. Um, we got into the website game, uh, Cheap and Cheery. 
Eighteen mm -hmm. ninety-five a month. They're not expensive. Um, but the reasoning behind that is to say again, hey, look, we're helping brand you, mm -hmm. right, with respect to just keeping your look and feel consistent across all your marketing as well. Yeah. The idea behind websites, and I mean, there are a number of awesome website companies out there. Uh, a lot of our buddies run a bunch of those website yeah. companies. Do I feel that we're competitive? Sure, I guess we're offering a website, so there's some competitive to it, but I'm not going the gamut that some of those guys are with like yeah. pumping out lead gen. We do lead capture. Right, so we'll set up, it's an IDX site. Again, it's stupid easy to go and manage through the back end of your CRM, so you want to update videos, mm -hmm. sliders, you don't need to be a WordPress person, you don't yeah. need to be a web programmer. Go in here, put a new video, put a new picture, things will change. Um, listings, again, full yeah. IDX feed, inclusive in the feature. And then there's the lead capture. Yeah. So if somebody goes in there and they punch in their information, it'll come back to Loop CRM, and then you can start, set up action plans and marketing. And so it really is full circle there, you know, but we're not going, the distance, it's just more now when you look at kits, kits is your complete realtor toolbox. Yeah. Minus obviously pieces here and there, which like I rely on the pros <laughs> to do that type of stuff, but it's, yeah. it's uh, you know what I mean? It's, it's trying to bring their costs down and give them more value add features. Yeah. Makes Make sense. sense, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Get rid of that. Oh, mm -hmm. it's a showing. Oh, I missed it, whatever. Go for it. I don't care. I'm mean, gonna just put this on airplane mode. That was an offer, I mean. never mind a showing. Yeah. That was like you just got the number yeah. you were looking for, but because you didn't pick up the phone, yeah, no. I'm gonna lose money now. They called another realtor. Yeah. Fuck those guys. <laughs> well, I got my agent bringing an offer, or like one of the showings tonight is my agent, and I'm like, come on. Yeah, it's you not want the cooperating right? commission? <laughs> of course, man. That'd yeah. Be good. yeah, sure, you can save a few bucks. Like yeah. That, right. So I was like, come on, get him to bring the offer. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it, it, it's a weird one, but. Man, I want it. Yeah, buddy. Hey, I, I, I got my fingers crossed for you. Yeah. Well, it's the thing, right? Like, you sell, or we bought before we sold. I mean, I can say this on here because this will air after yeah, everything's yeah, settled. Yeah. But, yeah, like, the stress of that is crazy. I'll tell you this. Like, even last year when we looked at the height of the market back in what it was, the spring of, like, 17, right? Yeah. I remember looking at my neighbor, and I've, you've probably heard me tell this part of the story before, mm -hmm. but, like, three doors over from me, somebody had listed at uh, one... One one million fifty thousand. No, they sold for one point three five, three hundred thousand yeah. dollars over asking. Yeah. Okay, never mind that I believe at that price that they listed at, we were already inflated by like a couple hundred G's. Yeah, so I'm going like this is ridiculous, right? They went and sold at that point. And I was thinking, do I list the house? Do I put the house up? What do I do? And then I'm like, where am I going to buy? And I'm like, I can't. I'm not in a position to rebuy what yeah. I've got right now for those types of numbers. It doesn't work. So, but there's this thing of going, just freaking flip it and yeah. figure out what you're going to do after. So, and then it's like all the pros that we know, like all the real serious people all went, never jeopardize the family home, yeah. right? Like it's not the investment thing. Like don't yeah. mess with it because God knows what happens. And I mean, hindsight's 2020, right? Yeah. Had we had I, known the market was dropping that much. Had I gotten out and done it at that time, I, I would have been hugely up, rented for whatever. But the yeah. thought there was, okay, go rent for six months or a year. What if the market you're renting and within six months the market's going up? Yeah. Now you got to maybe burn your rental fee because you want to buy. Yeah. But what happens if the market continues to climb a little bit? I've now taken myself right yeah. out. Right? So, so I was I looking know. at it. So, so like the neighbor two doors down for me, renovated home compared to mine but the exact same model. They sold for 135. Right, see? So I was like, I could probably get one one. Right, that's what I was at, yeah. So my wife and I were looking at, or mainly I was looking at, because my wife is, didn't want to move. Yeah. Selling here, moving to Calgary. Wow. I could get a four bedroom, completely renovated, 3,000 square foot home with a view of the mountains. Yep. And I would have had a five year total mortgage of five years. Yeah. And I, I'd been like, I'll now, tell you this. now we're selling for eight forty-five. If right, <laughs> yeah, okay. And I looked at, I looked at uh, on my street the other day. I don't remember the exact numbers anymore, but it was like well below the numbers I just mentioned. Yeah. But I mean, the guy listed and actually sold for twenty thousand less than listed. Yeah. And I'm looking at the house. I'm like, dude, there's like townhouses right next door that are selling for more money. What are you doing? So he might have been in a position where he bought yeah. and just that's it. He had to go. Yeah, I don't know, happens. right? So I don't know, man. It's it's. Yeah. Uh, I would tell you this: if I didn't have 
and I love my family. <laughs> but yeah. if I didn't have like my, 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 my sister, my parents, and my, my relatives, my in-laws, and my cousins, and everybody else here, which naturally they're here, we all live here, yeah. I'd be gone in the mountains in BC somewhere. Yeah, like, I'd, do, I'd either be in a mountain or on a lake. Yeah, or gone. the ocean. No, it'd be like the yeah. mountain and the lake and the ocean, yeah. like all together in one, like I'd be able that's to like see like all the cash out of the GTA market. Yeah, we'll buddy, go, like, especially with my business, right? like, I can literally do it from anywhere. That's what I mean. Oh, so. dude, but that's... That's the other thing. It's like if I, I mean, I've said to all my staff, I'm like, does everybody want to move up to Muskoka? Like, yeah. we don't have to go that far, but like, if you all come up there, we can bring the machines, we can bring everything else yeah. up there. And we, we, you know, we'll be good. Team trip. And then by riding in in the morning, yeah. we'll be even nicer than driving down the 404 yeah. and freaking traffic. Beautiful. Can't stand yeah. 404. Oh, I know. It's brutal. Traffic Can't sucks. Stand well, it, that's man. why working from home is so great. That's I why know, I'm moving. Right? I get my own office at home now. <laughs> well, here, think about it. I live north end of Richmond Hill, yeah. and it's taking me 40 minutes to get down here. And we're not even leaving Richmond Hill yet. Yeah, you should really just come in after rush hour. <laughs> I, I actually do. And yeah. then I end up leaving after rush hour as well. Yeah, it's like, I'll be here till you know, 6.30, 7 o'clock some nights, a lot of nights. I'll get home, I'll hang with the kids for like an hour, hour and a half, summertime, you yeah. know, a couple hours, whatever. The minute they go to bed, it's like, you know, take a shower, sort of like get your like bearings and no, pop this stupid thing back up and, you know, go yeah. back at it for another couple yeah. hours because it's quiet time. Well, that's what I've gotten to the point where like I would just rather work than like watch Netflix again. That's, so yes, right. Instead of that, I'll just work. Like I just, that's my, I, it's, well, weird, it's my version okay, of Okay, but, but here's the thing though. Yeah. It's like here, we, I, I, part of a mindshare rant, I will talk yeah. a lot about time management because it's, I think, um, and I'm sure we can agree on this one is when you look at, you know, the average salesperson, and I'm not even going to buckle down to realtors and poke at realtors at the moment, but I say salespeople, no. if they're really good at being salespeople, they're probably very bad with their scheduling and yeah. books and everything else because they just move like this, but they're, they're rainmakers and it's a good thing. But again, looking back to the longevity of a business and, and trying to simplify how much we work and how much we yeah. spend, I believe time management's a massive piece of that. Yeah. And so now it comes back to how do we manage our time? What are we doing with it? And I, a couple years ago maybe, kind of made this like little pact with myself. And I mean, you know, and a lot of people that are watching this, if you know me, you know how much I love my Leafs. Yeah. Right? That three hours in a day though, yeah. that is work time. And so the game is on and it's watching me. Mm -hmm. And there's a running joke with Jen, my wife, that I see no goals. Like I will be there watching every game, every minute of it, but the head is like this, and it's like they scored, damn, you <laughs> That's know. Three plays for. Or like yeah, <laughs> or you're like watching, you're like you'll take a second, like watch, and be like yeah, yeah, yeah. Put your head down, boom, they score, yeah. right? I miss it all, but it's that thing for me that says if I can take that time and instead of yeah. just veg for the game, but actually punch away, I'm sitting on the couch or at my desk or whatever. Yeah. Why not? Exactly. Right, because it's gonna be a lot of times that I'm not doing that. Like you got the similar setup to me with like the multi monitor. Oh my god! Man. So I have, and like, then it can get even worse. Yeah. Well, my second monitor is actually. By like, the way, you'll be happy to see this. I actually do. For those of you that know, I'm a PC. I actually do have a Mac. That's for when you need to do serious work. Just, yeah. Just like when I actually like. Yeah. When I'm actually gonna do something, I like yeah. open that stuff up. This yeah. stuff's all just show. Yeah, it makes it, it makes it look nice. So like I bought a gaming monitor. Oh really? How so it's that? like double wide. So I, it almost acts like three monitors. Nice. So I'll, that's what I do. Like for me, it's Raptors. Yeah. At least like yeah. I obviously love the Leafs too. Yeah. But it, not a, yeah. Yeah. No, I, know, I, know, I know you're thinking about basketball yeah. for sure. So that's what I do. Is I put the Raptors on one of my screens and then the work on the others. And it's just the perfect way to go. So what's the deal then, very quickly for any Toronto fans here? What's the deal with uh, Kiwi or Kawi or Kawhi, Kawhi or Kawhi whatever you call Leonard? Him? Yeah. Oh, we so haven't heard scared. anything from him yet. So. So tell me about this uh, eMERGE event, Aurea. What's yeah. this? I mean, I'm excited to be there. Uh, have you spoken there before? I have not spoken there before. No. I'm incredibly excited to be part of the lineup. Um, they reached out to me, whatever it was, like a few weeks ago, and they're like, you know, we want you to be one of the keynotes at the conference. And yeah. I thought like that was really, really cool to hear, um, especially the fact that they are for now, I guess you could yeah. call the licensing education body of for Mason, another, Ontario. Well, yeah. And I mean, you know, not for anything, whatever, Canada wide, like you look at the Ontario market of realtors, like 
almost 50% of the realtors reside here, yeah. right? So it's, it's a very cool thing. Like I'm very yeah. humbled and honored by that. Um, but I know you've been there multiple times. This will be my third emerge. Right, like I've never done it. You yeah. Know? I'm jacked about it, but I don't know what to expect. Like, I mean, so what to expect. But. It's changed a bit. Like it used to be six cities and now they've dropped it to four. Yeah. Um, but, so it's an interesting one from like, even like a business standpoint. Like one, it's nice because you go to different areas. So you see a lot of agents you don't normally. Cool. Because like normally if you do an event in Toronto, for yeah. example, a lot of the same. It's all like from outside of Toronto, it's the same agents who travel every yeah. time. Because there's a lot of people who just won't travel. Yeah. But when you go to Ottawa, you go to like, we're going to the Lakelands. Like, right. Go to Durham. Like you get those local agents you would normally see, which is like, it's a nice thing to like mix it up a little That's bit. That's cool. Um, where you and me will get the most value out of it, besides like meeting out or agents we normally wouldn't, is there's a great speaker networking cool so like the night before all the speakers yeah. do a dinner every night nice and i remember the first one i ever did it was in ottawa yeah and we're actually going back to ottawa this yeah we were out so we met them all the first time there and we stayed out till 3 a.m we closed the bar doing karaoke oh, in the wow. byward market and had to speak the next morning i was at <laughs> Emerge for 7 a.m. <laughs> Bright eyed and not so bushy tail. <laughs> but like, it became just like a really great community. Like, I have a lot of friends, like Kelly Scar and I, who are yep. pretty close. Kelly, I haven't now. met yet. I'm looking forward to meeting. He was in sure. Blue Mountain. I don't think we like, but we. I don't think that we got into any type of conversation or anything. But I know that yeah. you guys seem to be tight. Yeah, I just we become like whatever. friends. Yeah, and like Emerge is where like we came like pretty close cool. friends. Um, and that's like that's where it comes as you create those really tight relationships, yeah, which leads to a lot more. And like, by like, even with mine, when I'm looking at like the talk that I give, it changes by the end as I'm talking to other speakers and things like that. Uh, but the merger, it's great because like they do it, and then this year's format's a little different. So it used to be that everybody spoke in the morning for 20 minutes, mm -hmm. and then you had a breakout where you did like an hour where people could ask questions and you go more in depth on your topic. Mm -hmm. So you had a kind of teaser oh, and then more yeah, in depth. Yeah, 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 yeah. This year they're changing it. Yeah. So this year it's some panels. So I'm moderating a panel in the morning. So I think- Oh yeah? Yeah. That first panel in the morning, like the first, first one. Uh, yeah. So it's- Cause Zillow. I think there's like an introductory thing, then there's a panel. Yeah, and then I, I know I'm on day forty-five. Okay, then because yeah. I'm on like right so I'm after not going to do a three a.m. morning. Yeah, yeah, see, I'm on right I'm after not you karaoke. Guys. They asked so. me that. They're like, Dave, are you good for doing like our ten a.m. slot? I'm like, yeah. yeah, no problem. They're like, for sure. I'm like, yeah. yeah. And I'm thinking about yeah, doing the eight forty-five. I'm like, oh, I'm not doing the <laughs> byword market till three a.m. this time. That was like um, when I MC the C twenty one conference, yeah. and we had we had three nights and this or three days, and the second night was their big party. Yeah. Well, after the big party, we had we had to like be live the next morning. So here I am at like three o'clock in the morning, literally. And I mean, it's just what I yeah. do, but like writing fresh content for myself for like the next yeah. day, because you're live with people. Yeah. Like it's fun to bring something up and you can talk about something that happened. So I'm writing content and I'm like, okay, I gotta be on stage in about four hours. I'm still writing content. Okay, go to bed. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like go to bed for like two hours, wake back up, go on stage and be like, you got so much energy. How do you do that? And you're like, <laughs> yeah. And the minute you go, <laughs> you go back to your room, like, <laughs> Oh man, I was at, actually funny, related to the show, I had a conference I was at, and we were out till 2 a.m. with all the people. So it was like a top producer only conference, yeah. like invite only type of idea. All big team leaders were out till 2 a.m. having drinks. Nice. And one of the guys who does like 150 deals a year looks at me and goes, why haven't I been on your show yet? And I'd be like, uh, so come on the show. Yeah. And he goes, well, the only time we have is 8 a.m. tomorrow morning. Oh, this is 2 a.m. Wow. Sure enough, six hours later, you guys are filming. popping beers oh, in my man, hotel room. Beers, I love it. That was the morning. least enthusiastic. That is what you call in. dedication yeah, to my craft. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, no right, pun now intended. I'm gonna go brush my teeth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, have a little bit of eggs. Yeah, you know? but that was like the funniest. Like we, I think it was one of those things. Like we're texting each other like, the next morning, both hoping the other would be like, "No, yeah, let's ah, cancel. Let's do it." No one time. wanted to be the That's chicken on that so one. So funny, man. Um, that was, it was pretty but I'm looking forward to those events. Like I, I uh, they're great events. Like they they handle them really well. And I'm like, looking forward to because I got to imagine that they handle them well. Yeah. I got to imagine that the speakers like just. I mean, there's a lot of people that I haven't met yet, so yeah. I'd love to meet people. Um, and I'm I, naturally just you know the fact that we are in the Canadian. I mean, we're, we're yeah. Canadians. Uh, being able to really service the Ontario yeah. Association and do that with the support of them. Yeah. Um, 
it's a very cool thing because it says that I mean, we get the opportunity to be in front of a great audience. No. Uh, at the same time, it means that a very incredibly reputable no. association believes in what we we bring to the table, yeah. right? And that's something that's something I'm very excited yeah. about. You know? And there's great spheres like we got Annette Anthony, who she's from Arizona. She works for Exit Realtor. She's like a tech trainer person with Exit, and just one of the like genuinely nicest people you ever meet. Um, so she's speaking. Richard Silver, who yeah, would Rich, also be uh, described course, as one of the yeah. nicest people you'd ever meet. Yeah, yeah, yeah Richard's <laughs> a good guy. Super smart. Um, There's another guy that I'm looking forward to meeting there uh, that I just heard about. I think his name is Steve Jager. Jager? Yeah, good guy. So he I think does, Big Jagger when I think of this guy's yeah, last name, right? He does chatbots. Okay. Um, I don't think I've heard him speak, but we've met at conferences before. Yeah. Uh, from the times I've met him, he seems like a great guy. Nice so guy. Yeah, cool. yeah. Uh, Sebastian that. Malinowski. Haven't met him um, either. So he's really good at like local video marketing. So I think that's what he'll talk about a bit. Nice. Uh, so he does pretty good in the digital and like building relationships through video. Um, who else? Like Kieran Gandhi. Yeah, is Kieran, I met obviously. Kieran. Yeah, of course. Uh, she's talking about negotiation. Cool. Um, I'm trying to think who else is speaking now off the top of my head. I feel like I'm blanking. I'm probably missing a yeah, few. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, we got like Cassandra talking about like forms. Cool. Stuff like that. Okay. So, like, it's interesting because, like, with her, like, she's talking about forms. It's not like an exciting topic. No. But I've never met anyone who knows forms like she does. Like, it, like, you know what? This, it's crazy. Like, the knowledge she has and, like, people walk away because like, she speaks at them all the time. Like, they walk away, like, Holy crap! I didn't know all of this. Like they're incredibly valuable. It's just like it's a shame that there's no. It's not like exciting because like more people need to hear her talk. <laughs> you know what? And there's the thing is like that is such an important need to do is explaining to people, fill out the form, or it's yeah. like, I mean, not switching topics here, but it's it's, you know, coming back like when you say you know. What is it I do, or like, and some people would say like, what is mindshare? I've heard of it, I get it, whatever. Like, what is it? Whatever, whatever. I mean, to me, first of all, I define mindshare as a top of mind, intuitive, instinctive reaction yep. to a product or service. So, you think of, you know, again, I, and I've told you this many times. Like, I think of like social media marketing. I think of just sell homes. Yeah. Right. And it's it's is that because you're my that friend everywhere you go? No, no. But, but, <laughs> but, but and I like and I seriously do yeah. though because I believe that relationship is important and as a yeah. friend of mine why wouldn't I want to support that yeah. so it's you know and there's 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 a multi-pronged reason why I think of just sell homes when I think of that right but no matter what we do and so when you look at again mindshare as like the thing yeah. you know another way to spin this that I say to people is you learn so many good things from people who get to tell you about forms and like what to say when you're at the table and and yeah. and, and how to you know, negotiate the deal like Kieran's gonna go on about. Like, I think that is hugely important. I don't talk to that stuff, zero. Yeah, me either. I don't talk about when you get to the table. No. I talk about getting you to the table, no. right? Well, that's my problem. With that's my big thing. Brief interruption there is like, so I used to like be a trainer. Yeah. And that was my issue was that we were had to train on every topic. So like, I remember I was asked to do like an hour presentation on building a referral based business. Yeah. I'm like, I Ooh. didn't. <laughs> So like my like I my presentation I literally like okay I called up agents I knew who did that interviewed them then created a presentation right. but essentially I'm regurgitating other people's yeah, words yeah, yeah. and especially after because like a lot of times I train on tech after a year of training it's changed yeah absolutely so it's like I I that became my problem like I everything was in theory yeah and that's why like now when I talk I'm like all right here's actually what's working yep. We're going to take that and show you what's working yesterday and today. Yep. And here's where we think it's going tomorrow, or as opposed to this is what another guy told me. And there's the thing, right? Yeah. And that's that's a big deal of it. It's it's no. uh, it's again, it's trying to train so there's some actionable takeaway and something that they can look ahead at. Mm -hmm. And I mean, again, that's the idea. It's no. like I want to help you get there. Yeah. Once you're there, you you, you got to know how to fill out the yeah. form. You got to know how to negotiate the deal. Yeah. You got to know how to whatever. But that's why I never talk about forms because I don't even do them anymore. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm not that guy. Like yeah. I, I can't tell you what to do when you're at yeah. the table. If you want to go through with me and go, you know, Dave, if somebody said this to me, what would you do? That I can help you with because, like, yeah, again, that's just. I guess maybe kind of my personality who I am but yeah. I've never been to that table unless yeah. I'm the guy selling or buying the piece of real estate yeah. right I'm not doing it for somebody else so I don't know and I don't have that experience yeah. and I don't claim to have that experience so here's an interesting one so you are obviously heavily involved in the real estate industry if you had to sell your home tomorrow 
How do you decide who to call? Uh, you know what? The reality is I've got a uh, aunt that is in the business. Mm -hmm. um, she's been in the business ever since I was, I mean, before I was born. Mm -hmm. She's incredibly tight uh, with me. There's a know you like you trust you factor there. Yeah. Um, beyond that, I would say to you that she actually does the things that I harp on realtors to do. Yeah. You know, she'll send me a listing of something that's sold down the street from me. She'll keep me posted on these things. And so, you know, you want to talk about She's here. built Mindshare. She has <laughs> built Mindshare. She absolutely has. But I mean, here, something that I'll go on when I'm on stage with people is talking about, you know, you want loyalty in this business, yeah. right? We don't, and I mean, you've sort of seen my shtick on this a little bit, but we don't think of a realtor like that, yeah. right? If I'm not in the market to buy and sell a house, I'm not thinking about a realtor. The realtor wants me to think about them, but I'm just not yeah. because I'm not there. So it's, you know, the mindshare aspect now comes to what are you, the realtor, going to do to ensure that we continuously think about you, no. right? And then I believe that, you know, when the realtor, when the salesperson adds that value to the relationship no. without any, you know, predetermined notion of I'm going to get this deal. Yeah. But instead, you're genuinely, like inside, like deep down, you're genuinely doing this just to empower me. Yeah. Somehow that's going to circle back to you. The, the universe is going to give it to you. And I know that sounds kind of corny and all that <laughs> crap, and that ain't me. But like the universe is going to give it back to you. You know, people are going to gravitate to you. Um, it's the value add. So it's like, how would I choose? I mean, I come back to who's developed the relationship. Yeah. And who's doing it in a sense where they're consistent about it. Because yeah. there's people that will come and knock on your door. In, in the physical sense or the call or the, hey, I'm interested in like being a realtor, but they'll never follow up because they don't get that deal. It's the person who continues to just be there who gets that deal at the end of the day. You know, that's the big thing around making that decision. Um, it, it, it's value add, man. Like, and I mean, I, I joke around being corny about it, but it's, yeah. it's you know, and you ask Jen, ask my wife, right? And I said this in a presentation yesterday to a group of agents. I am not that guy that believes in the power of reciprocity. Yeah. Pardon me, let me rephrase that. I wasn't that guy. Through real life living it and doing it and being for real about it, like genuinely, like Andrew, like friend to a yeah. friend, like living it and going, I'm gonna do this today and I'm not gonna expect you to buy from me, and if you don't buy from me, I'm good, but did you learn something? Yeah. yeah. Truthfully, bro, like, that's what's uh, lent to the success of Mindshare. Yeah. You know, like I was on a call with a good lady yesterday. Why did I call her? I called her because she's in my funnel, because I'm doing my phone calls, the things that I tell everybody you gotta do <laughs> this stuff, but like, practice what you preach. So I picked up the phone and I called her. And she said to me straight, I'm like, what, what does kids do? We sell newsletters, that's where we dread generate business. If you, you want our website, you can have it, but like, you got to do newsletters. You want to see her? I'm like, you got to do newsletters, like all this stuff. So it's, she said to me straight, and she's the assistant for a, a, a very successful team. She goes, he just doesn't like newsletters. Yeah. I'm like, okay, cool. She's like, but what do you guys do on the social media front? And I started talking, like, we just come up with some content. Yeah. And then she says to me, she says, well, is that the same content that every other realtor is sending out? And I said, well, it depends how you look at that. Because my team is going in to find something from, you know, a big major media yeah. publication. We're taking that, we're posting it up on the back end of our system, and you can share it out. And when you share it, it looks like you took it from that media publication, not from kids. Yeah. So if the next agent does that, it's not like they took it from kids, it's like they took it from the media. So could two people share that article? Yeah, a million percent two people could. Yeah. But does it look like you went and took it from the same source, like, like your marketing company? No. Yeah. So then she says to me, well, my biggest problem with social media is the time involved, right? It comes back to time management. And I said, okay, time involved. I said, she goes, can you help us with that? I said, well, let's go backwards for a second. Mm -hmm. You just said to me, you don't want the same content as every other realtor. So yeah. if I'm going to do content for you, you either got to pay me a lot of money or you got to realize that other realtors are going to be yeah. sharing it out. She goes, oh, that's a good point. And I said, yeah. So really, the leverage here is that you come up with content and then you're diligent yeah. and consistent around your social media. And then I gave her like a little two cents of like how I track my stuff with like the grid that I do and like how I make sure like I'm just doing stuff today, right? It's just a visual. It's, yeah. a, it's a conscious thing. Accountability. And I explained that to her and she goes, oh my God. She's like, you're like giving me so much information. Like we're not even like clients. And I'm like, yeah, that's okay. 
She's like, no, no, but this is huge. I'm like, yeah, well, like, you know, my two cents for the day. Yeah. She's like, oh, no, this was worth way more than two cents. I'm like, I still don't know why you're spending this much time with me. Yeah. I'm like, seriously, I just want you to, like, do well. Yeah, we get she, that all the time. Like, I've had people, because, like, obviously. You, and I know you get it. Like, any Facebook ad question, people just send us messages. Like, could be as simple as, like, hey, this isn't getting approved, or I can't figure this out. We get them all the time. Like, I'll get, like, if I'm busy, I get someone on my team to, like, jump on a screen share with people we don't even know and aren't paying us anything. To be like, it's a five-minute fix. Just yeah. go fix it for them. Yeah. That happens all the time. And they're like, what can I pay you? I'm like, don't worry no. about it. No. Like, if it's a five-minute fix, yep. whatever. Like, it helps everyone get better. And, like, that's the problem, I think, in the industry is there's so many people who are, like, guarded about what they're doing. Like, you get into, like, some of the groups. Obviously, you get a lot of the people who come from that mindset of all share. Yeah. But, like, when you go into offices, there's still so many who are, like, no, no one can know. Like, I talk to teams all the time, and they're like, okay, but no one else will yeah. know that you're doing oh, it yeah. for us because we don't want anyone else hiring you. You're ours for the area. Like, people are very guarded about what they do. And it's an interesting one because, like, you go to the conferences, and they all talk about coming from that place where yeah. we're going to share everything. Yeah. And that's not actually a minority of people that actually Well, no, that. but and it is. Like, and if you think about it, too, though, right? And we've been doing the conferencing for a yeah. long time. You listen to so many different people out there talk about adding value. Yeah. Um, you know, one of our key terms, like when we're like whatever, forgot like actionable takeaways and stuff yeah. like that. But it's like you talk about the adding value, and it, and it and it's almost getting to the point where this conversation around adding value is getting jump the shark, <laughs> tiring a little bit. Like yeah. it's like like you know, how much more can we say this? Yeah. But there it is again when it's talk about video, yeah. speaking, delivering a message. If you do it consistently, no. losing weight, quitting smoking, if you do it consistently, it ends up working. No. So it now comes away and goes, you're going to have all these people that come from this conference, and then you're going to have only really a small handful of people that actually put that into play. And when you go back to those people after a number of ones and you go, how's it going? They go, it's working. Like, I'm, I'm doing well. But the group, what, less than 1% will actually do that? There's the thing, though. But it's the same thing back to the whole thing that you were explaining to me about Dean when he, you know, with the the email thing and how many people actually did the vid or the, um, was it? uh, Nine-word email? No. No? Kuzmik, the guy. Oh, Kuzmik, When you said, you know, you put it out and he said, you know, send me a video and blah, blah. One person. Yeah. Because everybody will listen, feel good, come back, and forget it all. Well, everyone thinks it's like, oh, someone else is, like, I hear this all the time, be like, I mean, everyone's doing Facebook ads, why should I? Because they work. Yes. But people are, like, if you keep saying, like, everyone's doing this, why, like, I shouldn't because everyone's doing it, then just, you're never going to do anything. Well, but like, look, look at over a pint. Yeah. Are you the first show out there? I'm not even the first show that drinks. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's like, and, and like, my show yeah. one on one life. Like, my, the, no. The key here is execution. Yeah. Consistency. That's, I mean, value and everything else, absolutely, right? And like, yeah. knowledge, right? But it's, you could have the best knowledge. You could deliver a shitload of value. If you don't do it consistently, yeah. it's going to die no matter what. Yeah. And you killed it, not everybody else. Well, it's right? like with Facebook ads. Like, we've had clients who've, like, canceled after three weeks. They're yeah. like, I haven't had any deals. I'm like, it's three weeks. Well, like, I've had that conversation with people before, well, too. They're all like, the time. You know, I'm going to get rid of these guys that are doing my stuff. I'm like, oh, yeah. why? They're like, oh, you know, nothing's happening. I'm like, i got to ask you a question. Yeah. Just, just, just before you do that. So you don't think they're doing much. What are you doing? What I, <laughs> well, what do you mean, what am I doing? I hired them. they got to be... No, 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 no. you got to understand how this world works. Yeah. That's... There's a big problem. Funny, I had a... I was actually... Having, it wasn't on the show, but I was having beer with an agent. Yeah. And they had a coach, and, like, coaches like accountability. Yeah. And I actually also knew their coach, and the coach was like, I don't understand. Like, they're doing all the work. They're making the calls. They're not closing. Right. They get the agent over beer. Yeah. And I'm like... This is what's happening. Like... Just kind of a curiosity, we're shooting the shit, talking about it. And he goes, yeah, I'll be honest. I just tell her I'm making the calls. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't made the calls in three months. <laughs> See, but come on. But how do you yeah. expect anything to come to life? Yeah. Right? Well, this is one of those things where, like, it's such a weird, like, it's just getting off your ass and doing it. I get so often, they go, yeah, but Dave, what am I going to say? Yeah. Okay? And it's it's so simple. Andrew, it's Dave. Who? I know, I know. I'm sorry, buddy. It's been a long time. I apologize. Yeah. I'm calling you to call myself out right now. No. Oh, Dave, yeah, you asshole. Eh, no. Click, right? But I can call you back now, no. right? And I can I can call myself out on it, play that a little bit, not sell you on anything, and then just build the relationship that in turn will come back around. No. And it could be 
you do the deal with me. It could be you tell somebody about me. It could be whatever. Like, you know, we come back to like consistency and value. I like, I rip a Mindshare video all the time. Like I put out, I try to put out at least one a week. No. I don't know if people like them. I mean, I gotta imagine those people that like them, <laughs> but I gotta ask. Right, <laughs> but I gotta imagine there's a lot of people yeah. that don't like them. Yeah. The point is, think what you want. I'm gonna continue to be consistent about it. Yeah. I'm gonna continue to deliver my message and what I believe is a value add. Take what you want from it, right? So. So from the mindshare videos, because like they're in the wheelhouse, yeah. and you see them all. Which the time. I I am yeah. very grateful that you don't delete them. Thank <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, you're welcome. Well, maybe I will now. <laughs> <laughs> so and this is like a good, interesting one. So I'm curious what you do from this perspective. Is a lot of agents put out a lot of content. Yep. Some of it, let's be honest, not so great. Nope. From your perspective, like you're putting out all these videos, how much time do you spend looking at results and then changing and tweaking what you're doing with those videos? to get your message kind of out there more going forward? Uh, it's a good question. I, it's loaded. Mm -hmm. Admittedly, I would tell you on a daily basis, I don't spend uh, a ton of time trying to figure out yeah. what does and doesn't work. Um, I can tell you, and I've had this conversation uh, many times with Alicia as well, I believe through experience, mm -hmm. And I've, I'm, I think I'm up to video, published video 118, I think I've got a few extra ripped already, yep. right? So it's, but like 118 videos. So yep. it's... A little more than this will be 21. Yeah, <laughs> right? But like the thing is this though, it's, yeah. it's, I've learned that if I'm sitting at my desk every video, yeah. I'm going to get less views yeah. because they're going same thing, maybe it's the same message, maybe people don't realize it's a different message, maybe yeah. it's boring for people, whatever. Uh, I did a video where I took Jen, my wife, on a ride on a motorcycle for, you know, we did a little tour of Manitoulin yeah. Island like about a month ago. And we went to a waterfall and I was like, I saw this river yeah. and she's taking her own photos and I'm like, I'm going to rip a video, right? And I did something about like the way the river flows and like yeah. your business or whatever. But here I am in a hat, in yeah. a bandana, in my, in my riding gear and I thought, forget it, I'm just going to rip a video because like anyways, yeah. that's just, that's who I am, what do you want, right? Yes, but it's like... Beer? Like, uh, that's who I am, right? <laughs> this is what we call but, a work day. <laughs> but here, here, here's the idea, is that's why I love working with this guy. Um, I ripped the video. Yeah. That video got a huge amount of hits. Now, why? I don't exactly know why. Was it the message or was it where the hell is he? Maybe it's just like great in a bandana. Who knows, dude? Like, it could be yeah. anything, but it's like, when I did like, like I was speaking at a conference, I don't know, a couple years ago in the East Coast, I did a, I, I walked out on a pier in the Bay of Fundy. Yeah. I did a video. Times Square, did a video. You know, last year at Connect in New York, or this past year in New York, from like, I was in like the 90th floor of like whatever building I was in. Luckily, I got this really cool view of Times Square, but I ripped the video of Times Square behind me. It got a lot of views. So when you talk, when you ask the question around like uh, watching your stuff and going like, are you testing or whatever, yeah. I find that where I am has a um, cheers, buddy. Cheers, buddy. A little hopped and confused from Mill yeah. Street Brewery. I liked it. I like it. I like the cruiser. It's a lot different than the cruiser. Mm, it it's is. Good, though. I like that though. Yeah, it's good. Mill Street makes a good beer. Yeah, Mill Street organic. Like overall, one of my yeah, favorite yeah, beers. right. Yeah. Like overall, just Mill Street has done a really yeah. good job with their beers. We actually funny side by story there. Um, so we play hockey. I've said this millions of times to everybody, but we play hockey every Thursday night. In our great like, fucking league. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, no, that's so so sorry. Our that league is the summertime rollerblade, and yeah. then we got our ice league, and it's the same. Like I got six teams in my rollerblade league that yeah. I run. Two of those teams are actually one team on ice, yeah. right? So wicked group of guys. We used to play Mill Street Brewery. Nice. So yeah. one year in the finals, we lost. Don't they walk into our room with a case of beer? Yeah. And we're like, you guys are the best, yeah. right? They're building mindshare. You know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, it's funny too, though. You know, you talk about that. And, and like, I go to hockey and like my buddies, like I've literally, I've got a few buddies, especially one, he's always like, you mindsharing today? Yeah. Building mindshare? Remember when I ripped one of my first mindshare videos, it was like, and I was sitting at my desk and I said, you know, when somebody asks you what you do for a living, you don't just say I sell real estate, like, you know, say this. So I'm pulling up to hockey and my buddy's out there and he happens to be smoking a cigarette and I pull up and my window's down. He's like, uh, ask me what I do. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? He's like, ask me what I do. I'm like, what do you do? Because I don't just smoke cigarettes. And he does this thing, I try to kill him. I'm like, wait a second. <laughs> 
that bastard, right? And then another a client of mine from Calgary calls me up one day. He's like, so, uh, dude. He's like, yeah. I'm, I'm like, yeah. He's like, so ask me what I do. And I'm like, oh, man, seriously? <laughs> mine share. Yeah. My buddies at hockey are ripping me. That's mine share. But they remember. You know, all of this stuff comes back yeah. to it. So, again, on the on the grand scheme of things, where you all wonder, what is mine share? It's whatever the hell you want. That's but that that's yeah. what it that's you know that's where it comes back to is uh, is getting people to think about it in some way like how can what are they doing every day yeah. to get people around them and it's not again it's not go in create your own over the pine yeah. or create your own mind show one on live or create your own whatever it's not about that yeah. it's who are you yeah. what do you do like here lady yesterday. She says to me, I want to be on social media. I want to be better at it, but I don't want to let people in. I said, well, social media is about personal stuff. It's yeah. social. It's not, I don't care about your listening. First part's the most important. And I'll tell all you guys, like in an audience, I'll no. tell everybody, I don't care about your listings. I don't care about your open house. I don't care. I am not on Facebook. I don't know how I got to Facebook. No. I'm just there for a moment. So I don't care. It's because Facebook is mind share. They do. Facebook is the old is the new brick breaker, right? Remember I said oh, that yeah. one in Collingwood, like Blackberry. We used to pick yeah. up brick breaker and want to compete. I was so good at that. Remember that yeah, game? It's just you don't know why you played it at yeah. some points. Like you oh, were just in the bathroom. <laughs> why are you on Facebook, right? So it's this whole thing with the Facebook world, and like that whole thing is like it's not it's not mimic people, and it's if you really want to take advantage of it, it's, it's yeah. you have to let people into something. Yeah. And like I said again live on stage yesterday and I've said this many times before I will never talk politics with you uh, and it's I barely give a shit because at the end of the day I still gotta wake up and pay my bills yep. straight up whatever you call it what you want uh, I'll never talk religion with you because again I barely give a shit I don't care what color you are what where you came from what hat you wear I don't care if you're good people you're good people right so two moot points yeah right now my Harley you might hate guys that ride a motorcycle. Well, guess what? No, I'm joking. Uh, but it's, it's, you might gravitate to that. Yeah. Leafs, I'm gonna let you in. I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna die hard. Cut me open, I believe blue and white. But again, with the Leafs, you might hate the Leafs. You wanna bash me. Let's do it. It's fun. You might be a Habs fan. Uh, you might love the Leafs, and all yeah. you wanna do is talk Leafs with me. So right? here's an interesting Leafs one. You're going to speak in Ottawa. Yes. Will you wear a Leafs jersey on stage? I'll do it. I, yeah. I Did you see the clip? Okay, so that's a good question. Did you see the clip of when I emceed Century 21's national conference last year? I saw some clips. Okay. I don't know if I know whatever. So it was funny. Uh, main stage is like, I don't know, a thousand people in the audience, whatever. I'm emceeing this thing. And they said to me, Dave, we had we had uh, a guy by the name of Brandon Liston. He's the uh, national ambassador for Easter Seals. And he's, I mean, a great, great guy. Yeah. Uh, Anyways, he was coming up on stage and he was gonna do a little bit of a talk and then, you know, I had to give him a gift yeah. after the fact. Well, we're in Quebec. I had to give him a Montreal Canadiens jersey. Oof. Yeah, and I'm sitting there like, really? See do I gotta <laughs> give this to this guy? So I had this idea. So I didn't have time to put a jersey on because here I am in like a suit and everything. Yeah. I'm live on stage. There's like a thousand people there, whatever, whatever. But you behind- Hulk Hogan? I was thinking about it, literally I was thinking about it. Yeah. So, but behind the stage, what I did was when I had this bag on the table, just behind the table, I had this, I had this maple leaf scarf. Yeah. Okay. So I'm like, Brandon, we got a gift for you. And I walked behind the table and I like literally just nonchalant, like put this scarf on and I like, like patted yeah. it down just so like it took my real time putting it on. People, you know, kind of looking like, this guy did it, right? And then I walk back up and I give him, go to give him like this, this gift and he opens it up and it's this Habs jersey and the whole place started breaking yeah. out laughing, right? And everybody thought, this guy's brave. Yeah. He's sitting here in Quebec wearing a Leafs jersey, you know? Well, it's funny. I spoke in Ottawa one time and the guy ahead of me was a Leaf fan and like put on a Sens jersey to get cheers. No. I was like, no, 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 no. Dude, I spoke I in Calgary on. once yeah. and I went, go Leafs, go. And I literally ran behind the screen as I said it. Yeah. And people were bursting out laughing because they knew. Yeah. They're like, screw this guy. Uh, in Ottawa, I straight stood on stage, took the boot. But here's the thing with Ottawa. 
it's a third of them are Leafs fans anyways. Right. Well, there's the... Uh, I mean, and then, you know, another third are Habs fans. Wait a second. The Let's be real. The other third don't know what they're doing. Deep down, everybody's just a Leafs fan. Yeah. That's just the way it is, We are right? the center of the universe. Go Leafs! Go, yeah. <laughs> go say that out west. <laughs> I have. <laughs> they will kick you as hard as you came out there. They will yeah. kick you right back to Toronto. You won't even need a plane yeah. ticket. But that's actually, I find, like... Because I notice people, like, pander to, like, the local crowd they're in all the time. I go the other route. Like, I specifically... Oh, what is that? Change the battery. Oh, we're almost out of battery. Nice. Nice. Cheers we're that. doing well. Well, I guess that means we're wrapping up. <laughs> Interesting. Well, I hope oh. there's good value for it. Well, we had 130 minutes of things, so we... Wow. We, we earned it. Yeah, cool. Well, so I before the good camera content, dies, yeah. how can people get a hold of you? How can you help them? Uh, help them build Mindshare. Help you guys build Mindshare at all times. Uh, check me out, Mindshare101.com. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook at Mindshare101. Uh, you can also follow us at Kits Pack to follow Kits. And on Instagram, unfortunately, it's at David Greenspan 101 because somebody went in and stole my at Mindshare 101 on Instagram. And if you're listening right now and you're watching right now, please get in touch with me because I'd love to pick that one up from you. It was me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought so. See you guys next week for another guest who I haven't even filmed anything with yet, so I can't say who it is, but I assume it'll be someone good. See you next week, everyone. Thanks for coming on. Cheers, guys.